Hello everybody, um, another, <clears throat> another opponent's tutorial. This time a might bit more concise on how to hack your iPod using AlterPod. Um, if you haven't watched my other tutorial on how to do this, which wasn't as good, um, you need to download AlterPod, which is basically a firmware editing software. Uh, for your iPod from <coughs> mac.softpedia.com and then just search AlterPod. I'll also have the links in the uh, show notes. So download AlterPod um, and then download um, whatever theme you want from drivendesign.us. Mind you, by any theme, I mean these uh, four themes right there. I know 100% that these all work, okay? I am going to be downloading the iPod Touch theme. Okay, uh, so one little thing I want to make sure is that this is not a 6th generation iPod. I've just hacked it before, okay? This is a 5.5 generation iPod, and this tutorial is meant for people who have a 5.5 generation iPod. You don't need to have hacked your iPod um, in order to do this. I just already have, and I didn't uh, want to go through the trouble of um, bringing it back the old way that it looked. So I'm just going to download the iPod Touch theme and uh, go to the bottom and then click on the download. Um, <coughs> and then download it. Um, just a little reminder when you're downloading this uh, iPod Touch theme, uh, make sure that you're not downloading the Nano version, and also make sure that you're downloading the version that is compatible with your live iPod, in my case the 5.5 generation. Good. So, uh, wait for it to download. It took me eight minutes on a, I think, well, never mind. It took me eight minutes to download or something like that. Okay, so once it's downloaded, double click and wait for it to extract. And there you go. Um, it has the hack folder. You can get rid of the zip file. Okay, so now I'm gonna teach you how to uh, put the iPod touch theme onto your iPod uh, using AlterPod if you haven't already downloaded it. So, um, first thing I'm gonna need to tell you is uh, I'm not responsible for anything you do to your iPod. Uh, granted, it is extremely hard to screw up your iPod and I'm not sure there's any way that you can do that without physically doing something to your iPod. Um, if you do mess up and it, your iPod gives uh, you an error, just plug it in, go to iTunes, and click on Restore, and then it works. Uh, that's happened to me many times, not doing this specific thing, but uh, while trying to install iPod Linux or things like that. And you just click on Restore, and then it's all good. So, ready to hack? Good. So, uh, make sure that your iPod is plugged in, okay? Um, and then close iTunes, because um, iTunes auto-opens when you plug in your iPod. Give it a minute, and just force quit it. Or, I haven't even set up iTunes on this account. So, uh, just force quit iTunes, or quit it normally. Uh, make sure your iPod is still plugged in. Uh, it shows right there. Um, but make sure that iTunes is closed. Okay, now. AlterPod was originally built for, I think, um, Mac uh, 10.3. So the chances of it even working on Leopard were really, really slim. But 
As a matter of fact, it does work on Leopard. So, uh, you'll notice that when you open it up, it'll give you a little Apple script error. Doesn't matter. Doesn't do anything. Just click on OK. Now, this is an important part. I don't know why it requires you to do this. It's probably because I have Leopard. Uh, if any of you are using Tiger, you can tell me whether or not you need to do this. Okay, so just so what you need to do is click on the little drop down menu and even though there's only one and it's already selected, just click it. If you don't do that, it'll give you an error when you're trying to put the uh the uh hacked firmware onto your iPod. So now under restore, click on choose and go to desktop or wherever you save the um unzipped folder. Uh, click on the folder and then click on the .bin file. Um, on the on the iPod Touch hack, it is a .bin file. It on the other hacks, I think uh, the classic hack, it doesn't have any file extension. But you know, just click on the uh, file and then click choose and then click on restore. Now. If after 10 seconds or so it gives you an error, then you know that something bad happened. Um, it usually gives you an error if you haven't done that little uh, click on the drop down list thingy. Um, but you know, if it's been, say, 30 seconds, uh, then you're good to go. Now you just wait for it to restore. Another way that you can tell uh, stuff is happening is if you look at your iPod. Uh, right there, I'm not sure if uh, the eyesight's picking it up, but there's a little loading bar somewhere on your top, on the top of your screen. There's a little loading uh, symbol which shows that uh, stuff is happening. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna leave the computer and uh, speed up the restoring process so that you don't have to wait the whole time. Okay, so as you see, it's been about, uh, I'm not sure, but if you were looking at um, the clock while I sped through uh, the time, you can see that it gave me an error. But the error actually signifies that you are finished. So if you get an error after like 20 seconds, no, that means that something bad happened. If you get one after like 5, 10 minutes, that's great. That means that it worked. Okay, so now what you have to do is click on OK, and then um, go Apple, Apple, uh, force quit, and then click on Alter Pod, and then click on force quit because there's no other way to quit it. Okay, now what you do is open up a new Finder window and eject your iPod. So eject, and then just wait for it. Wait for it, and when it boots back up, it should give it a minute. There we go. The whole user interface has changed. All with a few clicks of a mouse and a few downloads. Anyway, if you enjoyed this tutorial or want me to make more, uh, please, please throw me an email. Toss me an email at uh, tutorialponage at gmail.com. I would really appreciate that. Anyway, that for now, goodbye. And thank you.